Hi, Mike Gibson coming to you live from Sky 2016. I've got the next generation with me here, starting from over uh, on my left. Uh, Amanda Roberts, welcome. Thank you. Uh, Shadi Arias, welcome. And uh, a repeat visit from uh, Sheila Sani. Well, we're talking today about digital media and the new generation. How are we using information out on the internet to educate ourselves? I think the old school way was you know, you looked at a complete article and read everything. Knowledge comes in two types. It comes in breadth, and it comes in depth. In the old days, we didn't have as much breadth, and people, I think, were much more well-educated in depth. But now we have so much breadth and depth that people are looking for ways to filter the information, to guide them to the important stuff. So, you know, how are you, what kind of tools is your generation using to manage this problem? So, uh, you know, um, again, it's a topic of whole digital uh, era, actually, these days. Um, one way to narrow down, and I actually just um, heard it in one of the committee meetings here, is actually looking at these editorials. I think they are so uh, beneficial. Again, if you don't have time to go into the breadth and depth of the articles and things like that, editorial reviews are great. They are concise. They are conclusive and to the point, you know. So those are great, and again, uh, those come in digital formats nowadays, you know. And then, uh, again, follow these uh, social organization pages, you know, because all these leaders in these uh, in your field, they write on these articles and data on the social network. So you can follow them and see what their viewpoints are and get to the point. So I think that's uh, very important these days. And, you know, now you have your mobiles, you have all different apps, you can it's at the tip of your finger. Mm -hmm. So I think that's the way to go. Yeah. Well, I mean, I use it for three things, mainly. Number one is... You the, use the internet? Or? The internet, mainly Twitter and social media. Mm -hmm. uh, I know it can sound uh, for live events, but also I'm using it to, to learn. So number mm -hmm. one, I use it to learn new publication, new literature, by following certain journal of my interest. And then if I need more, I click on that tweet or something to deep, go deeper. Mm -hmm. Number two is to connect, and that's why I'm here on this stage with you, because I follow you, I know what you tweet, your interest is almost going to be my interest in the future, to informational pedagogy, anti-coagulation, anti, anti platelets. But third thing also is important is for such a meeting here, Sky, ACC, the announcement for abstract submissions, for uh, committee meetings, and stuff like that, all comes with the social media now. So it's our, at our fingertip now to get into Twitter, or Facebook, or um, Instagram, and use these tools to um, learn, connect, and um, publish in the future. Jill? Well, I have to really thank Shadi, who took me from what I was doing probably in February, and then when I met him at a national meeting later that month, during Heart Awareness Month, I took it to the next level with using it as a research academic. We're here at this meeting, and this is the live BuzzFeed platform. But I think that social media, particularly Twitter, um, is so effective also if you have a passion for counseling and prevention. And so hashtags like Move It Monday or Monday Motivation or during the Heart Awareness Campaign, um, we're starting to use a hashtag at UCLA for the Women's Heart Disease Program. And I think that it is so dynamic that you can use it to counsel your patients because they're going to come. They're going to be asking you about diet and counseling. And physicians don't have all that time. And I have that interest in interventional cardiology, so I can actually allow myself, it's almost like a palette in painting, I can generate tweets about prevention and what I love and all that compassion for patient care and marry that to my interest in interventional cardiology and what's new and what's happening. And connect, really. I mean, we got um, offers to write for editorial journals because we've been tweeting. And people are taking a liking to the quick buzz. And I think that that's where the next generation is going of doctors, and definitely probably where research is going. So, you know, I think it's, these are all great comments, and, you know, I think we all want a lot of breath because we want to be well balanced. I think what also happens on Twitter, I think, is the commentaries, which I find are very good. Yeah. Um, I think it's very good that you can only use 140 characters. By the way. <laughs> that is true. Our friends here can be a little verbose. But, um, you know, then you have journals like Circulation saying, well, it failed, you know, because it didn't, we didn't get more page views or the things on social media, and I think they're missing the point. The point 
is people want to see the, the conclusion, conclusion. Right. what to draw from the study. They want to see the data and the figure, and then they're done. They move on to right. the next piece of information. Now, are we at risk, though, by doing that? Are we at risk of not training a next generation that can drill down in terms of depth? Uh, and are we just teaching a generation with a skin uh, and a very broad knowledge? Or do they need to be more critical and be able to drill down? Personally, I think medical school needs to be reoriented. I think we have to have much bigger focus on criticisms of data, you know, much more data scientist training, much more in the way of courses on statistics. And, you know, it's so much more than just the New England Journal of Medicine Journal Club. I mean, I think there's a lot more there. So are we at risk by just having a bunch of people just skimming information who don't know how to be critical? Well, obviously, there's uh, pros and cons for everything. Um, I would give you both the views, uh, and again, because I've struggled with it. Uh, so yes, um, as a physician scientist and you know, evidence-based medicine, you need to know at least the basics of statistics. You need to know what they're talking about, and if it's right, and if they have analyzed it in the right way. If it's a biased population, or can you apply it to your population, and things like that. But at the same time, uh, you know, with, again, the breadth of data that we're getting every day, like thousands of papers coming out, uh, a lot of busy clinicians actually don't have time to go into the depth of it, like, of every single article. Sure. No, that's and, not possible. Uh, but when you need to, we need to have the tools right, to drill down. Yes, yeah. I totally agree with that. They should have some basic understanding of it. Um, and that's where, you know, these leaders and these social pages come in handy. These leaders, I mean, all these people here, they are aware of these things. And so when they make their conclusions um, and summarize a paper, for example, they look at all that stuff. So, you know, you can gain through their knowledge and their um, uh, tweeting or, mm -hmm. or publishing, you know. Um, sure. So I think it, it's, you know, again, pros and cons of it. Yes, I totally agree there should be a basic understanding of the statistics uh, for every physician uh, in this evidence-based era. Um, but at the same time, again, we utilize your tools wisely. Sure. Well, I, I think it's, um, I had uh, the pleasure to meet one of the major journal editor in chief, and he told me the future of journals is going to be one page, <clears throat> two graphs, and five, six bullets. Right. And it's really, it's going to take an art and effort to summarize a big study into one page of figures. With a massive supplement. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And to be published in a major journal. And then they have a hyperlink that takes you to the whole PDF if you want. But um, going to your point, uh, I think it's part of the journal as they are, they have to do this. They have to put a figure, put a bullet, summarizing the study, but also they should probably educate the audience between now and then. Let's say talk about log regression. What does it mean? How can I use it? Uh, uh, other tool, uh, other statistical tool, just bullets. Or probably this is our job right now to teach our co-fellows who have been, like say we can capture people who had MPH training or a master of clinical research and ask him to send us like uh, tips or trivia or questions on and we can log it or post it and that's will will be a good venue to learn from both ends and that's going to eventually in 10 years we'll have a complete picture right and actually okay. sorry just to point that out actually a lot of journals are actually doing that they have um, i know some of the periodic journals they'll have the articles and then they have articles just on statistics like a curve uh, you know, for example, what's log regression, how to use it, and things like that, which actually has been very helpful. I couldn't agree more that this needs to start from much earlier on in our training. I mean, we all had EBM courses, um, but we, you know, masters in clinical science needs to be told about to probably college graduates that are interested in pre-med. And you always, always have the concept of a school of public health and, and getting it in. need to be educated too. A absolutely. And I think that we need to start younger. We need to target teaching it into the curriculum so we can all critically analyze the data. But at the same time, I also agree that it's nice to see big giants that are on social media and to learn from. I've learned so much from you and a few others that are real giants in the field that are tweeting. And it gives us an opportunity to see that viewpoint and come to light. And I think in terms of getting media to move to the next frontier, a lot of conferences are, are you know, publicizing their hashtag and their Twitter handle. Right. And bigger organizations, like the American College of Cardiology is where I learned it. When I sat on some 
advocacy meetings and quality improvement committee meetings at Sky, I said, where's your hashtag? How come I don't know about this? Right, right. So I, I think that getting the buzz out needs to go yeah. into marketing and, yeah. and really that's where we can really make that presence of, you know, all over and reach many people, not just in America, yeah. all over the world. Yeah. Well, obviously, I'm a big copy left advocate. Uh, you know, I think the information should be free. Um, you know, if you spent years collecting the information and then have to spend $40 of your own money to buy the oh, PDF, that's not good. But uh, I see a future where we'll have open access journals that are free. Uh, the funding mechanism will have to be sorted out, but I think there are creative ways to do it. I think we should move to a world where we have pre-publication. You know, you submit the Word document and let everyone in the world review it. Mm -hmm. uh, this is what happens in uh, the high-end physics world. You submit a Word document, the whole community comments on it. That's peer review. That's true peer review, not your competitors who are anonymous. Mm -hmm. Then you take all those into account, you revise it, you have a finalized uh, version. You have your big appendix with all of the raw data. We will have a world where we have raw data accessible, uh, I think, sometime in the future. And uh, then you would have it all coupled with slides and videos and, and everything else. So we're getting there, but it's very slow. It's very hard to fight the old world print model, basically. Mm -hmm. Chris, I have a question for you, actually. How, what do you advise for people in your era? I'm not saying uh, people have been practiced for some time. Right. To get involved in social media, what are the few, few tips you give them? To get involved. You know, when you get older, it's harder to try new things. Yeah. You know, look at the radio versus femoral debate. You know, the radio <laughs> is usually right. the young people, the femoral people are the old people. I, I do all my cases radio, but you know, it's hard to change. Is hard, and yeah. as you get older, uh, change is even harder. But um, I'm hoping with exposure to all of you that they'll see the benefits of, you know, the breadth of information that they can get very quickly from social media and see how it provides value to them. Ultimately, if it provides value, people will change. And I think we should use these venues as a session, as we're teaching people on data. We yeah. should teach them how well, to I use your tablet. we should do more at the meetings teaching people about this. Yeah. How to yeah. use your tablet to filter yeah. that data you want. That's starting to happen, but I, I think we need to encourage uh, the societies to do it. Yeah. All right, well, so great to have the next generation here, our next generation mm -hmm. of leaders. Thanks for joining us here from Sky 2016, and thanks to everyone for joining us live. Sky 2016.